the slow walk No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it Hello Las Vegas, we love you Las Vegas Hello to Nevada I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state With thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots This way, with you and I'd like to begin by asking a very simple question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I don't think so. What do you think? No way. Nah, you were much better off four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, and seven years ago, and eight years ago. This is terrible what's happening to our country. This is terrible. We have people that are grossly incompetent. We have the worst president in the history of the United States. We have the worst vice president in the history of the United States. And unlike us here tonight, we have an intelligent group of people. You have a man that doesn't need teleprompters, who's not nice. In Georgia, Tonight, they say that Kamala has just absolutely bombed. She is bombed. It's the big story. In fact, I, I was gonna watch it. I didn't want to come out. I wanted to watch that first. Isn't that terrible? Then I could explain to you what happened, but I hear it was bad tonight. But it's always bad. It's always bad. But I'm here today with a message of hope for all Americans. With your vote. In this election, we will end inflation. We, all of us together, we will stop the invasion. And we will bring back, I heard about for about four years. Think about it, four years ago, we had no inflation. We were energy independent. We were strong as hell. Nobody was playing games with us. Nobody was threatening us. The Middle East wasn't fighting. Russia wasn't going into Ukraine. They never would have gone. What a shame. What a mess we are in the world. The whole world is in a mess. And nuclear war with incompetent people looms. Don't kid yourself. We've never been so close. Our country is being crippled and destroyed by Kamala Harris and Biden. But he's like not even the president. What's going on with this guy? We're supposed to be talking about the president. We're talking about the vice president who got no votes. Whether you like him or not, I'm not a big fan, as you probably know. But you know, we had a debate. He didn't do particularly well. I wouldn't say it was the greatest. It was not Winston Churchill, do we agree? The late, great Winston Churchill, who was a great debater, this was not. But he didn't do well, but he went down. And uh, they shouldn't have let him. I mean, get 14 million votes, you got no votes. And now she's imploding worse than him. She's actually imploding, if you take a look. Because, look, I'm not supposed to say it, but we are leading by so much. <laughs> Whether we will have four more years of incompetence, failure, and disaster, or whether we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. We can do that. It's not too late. It's not too late. A couple of years like this, it will be too late. You'll never put it together again. After all the catastrophes that she has caused, Kamala Harris can't say one thing that she'd do differently. Did you see that the other night? Would you name one thing? How about 20? Would you name <laughs> like 25, 30? But I'm asking you to be excited about the future of our country again. You're going to be excited. Because this will be America.
America's new golden age. It's gonna be the golden age of America. You watch, you watch. And we're off to a little bit of a bad start because we're starting around the minus 30 yard line. But we'll catch up fast, we'll clean up our country, we'll get the criminals the hell out of here. <laughs> Every problem facing us can be solved, but now the fate of our nation is in your hands because we can't go any longer. We're taking it right up to the edge. Nevada, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris that you've had enough. You can't take it anymore. She's the worst vice president. She's grossly incompetent. Kamala, Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. It's a nation in decline, Kamala. Get the hell out of here. The polls are open for early voting in Nevada every day from now to November 1st. So uh, get your husband. Hank, get the hell out of the couch, Hank. And uh, get that big fat ass of you. We're gonna we're gonna go and vote for the president. We're gonna turn our country around, man. Come on, let's go. So get out, vote Republican up and down the ballot. We're gonna do a real job. With your help, 12 days from now, 12 days. We've been waiting for four years. Think of it, we did great in 2016. I hate to tell you, we did much better. Like millions and millions of votes better. But you know what, now, what we do is gonna be bigger. This will be the biggest political event in the history of our country. With your help 12 days from now, we are going to win Nevada, we are going to defeat Kamala Harris, and we are going to make America great again. with some of those colors I said. I don't know, maybe. I don't think, for me, I don't think it works. But we're pleased to be joined by an incredible leader from the Asian American Pacific community, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army Reserve and a former congresswoman and Democratic presidential candidate. And you just heard her. And she is great. And she, she is so popular. You know, I always say she's a woman of common sense. I've watched her for a long time. Of course, not that long because she's quite young. But I've watched her for a long time, and I've always loved her stance. She doesn't want to go to war with countries that nobody ever heard of that don't want war. Tulsi Gabbard, she's great. Thank you. Great job, Tulsi. Great job, Tulsi. Thank you. She's doing And we have, don't forget, Bobby Kennedy is going to straighten out our health. And I don't know if I'm going to have him working too much on the environment. I'm a little concerned about that with Bob. I don't know if I want him playing around with our, with our liquid gold under our feet, you know? Bobby, work on health. He's great. Because, uh, you know, I like the liquid gold. I think more than his oil and gas. I think I like that a little bit more than Bob. 
but he'll have an impact. No, he's so popular. We introduced him last night. Place went crazy. He went crazy with Tulsa too. And Tucker Carlson was here last night. He was very popular. We had a great, we had a great time last night. But we had about twenty thousand. Today we have twenty nine thousand people, and we have twenty nine. Barack Hussein Obama, right? Barack Hussein Obama got the Nobel Prize. He didn't even know what he actually asked. Why did I get it? Does anybody know? Right at the beginning, the early seconds of his administration, and he didn't do a good job either. He brought a lot of division and a lot of hatred. And if these companies don't make their products here, then they will pay a tariff. When they send their products into the United States for the privilege of competing with our workers and our cherished and now protected companies, we're going to protect these companies. They're going to come in by the thousands, and then we're going to protect them. Nobody's going to steal their product, their people, or their company. We're going to protect them through the intelligent use of tariffs. And as you probably heard, this big plant that everyone's talking about. That's being built by China in Mexico, right along the border. I said, if they build that plant, and if I win, I'm going to lose our good jobs, and they can't afford housing or groceries or a car. And yet, Kamala is importing millions and millions of illegals across our borders. First Corinthians second, verse nine, and it says, "No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind will imagine." Please welcome to the stage, Marco Rubio.
such a beautiful sight and an amazing feeling to be here to join all of you on this special night. We have people here from all different backgrounds, different races, ethnicities, places we grew up, experiences that we had. All of us coming together, united by our love of this great country. We are united by our love for each other as fellow Americans. 